I would always wait for my externals to change before I was confident enough to X, Y, Z. I would say, well, once I get the job or once I, I have that, you know, multi six figure launch, or once I get the guy or once like, then my life will change, then everything will be happy. Once I do this, then we can get that. And it wasn't until I decided to start what I call acting as if that I was able to come from a place, I was able to change my behavior. And I was able to come up from a place of no, I have to start being the person today that I want to be tomorrow in order to get the results that I need today. I'm Amy Porterfield, ex-corporate girl turned CEO of a multi seven-figure business. But it wasn't all that long ago that I lacked the confidence, the budget, and the time to focus on growing my small but mighty business. Fast forward past many failed attempts and lessons learned, and you'll see the business I have today, one that changes lives and gives me more freedom than I ever thought possible, one that used to only exist as a daydream. I created the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast to give you simple, actionable, step-by-step strategies to help you do the same. If you're an ambitious entrepreneur or one in the making who's looking to create a business that makes an impact and a life you love, you're in the right place, friend. Let's get started. If you love online marketing made easy, you got to check out Entrepreneurs on Fire, hosted by my dear friend, John Lee Dumas. He discusses things like how to live tax-free as an entrepreneur, uh, yes, please, and shares inspiring stories like how a college sophomore turned $20, cell phone, and a dream into a cookie company valued at over $500 million. I mean, you got to love stories like that. He'll leave you with actionable steps and fired up. Be sure to check out Entrepreneurs on Fire wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to an episode of the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast. I'm so grateful that you're tuning in. And listen, if you love this conversation that I'm going to have today and you want to continue the conversation, if you want to share your thoughts, your insights, your takeaways, or just any ideas that come up, come on over to Instagram. That is where I spend most of my time when it comes to social media. So I'm at Amy Porterfield on Instagram. Make sure you're following me, but jump into my DMs, say hello. I'd love to hear from you. Okay, so you are in for a treat today because I'm bringing on one of my gal pals who's been killing it as an entrepreneur for many years. Her name is Julie Solomon and she's been on the podcast before, but that was a while ago. So I thought it was high time she made another appearance. Now, the thing I love about Julie is that she has a huge heart. And so when I moved to Nashville, we were already friends, but she was one of my very first Nashville friends. She told me where to go, what to do, and how to navigate through the city. And I love her for that. But she also kind of made me feel grounded and like I wasn't alone. And even though I was in this new town and everything felt off and a little bit wonky, getting together with Julie on the regular reminded me that I have great friends and that I'm going to be okay and everything's going to work out just fine. Because she moved, she's from Tennessee, but she moved to LA and was there for a long time, which is when I knew her. And then she moved back to Nashville with her family. So she made a big move as well. So she really helped me navigate things. So. Huge shout out to Julie for being a dear friend, but also a badass entrepreneur, and that's why we're here today. So if you don't know already, Julie is a business coach. She's a speaker, host of the top-rated podcast, The Influencer Podcast, and now the author of the upcoming book, Get What You Want, How to Go from Unseen to Unstoppable. Julie has spent over a decade helping people align their purpose with their vision to find out what makes them shine while confidently sharing it with the world. And of course, because she's a smart entrepreneur, she has a few digital courses as well. And what I love about her teachings is that she teaches her students how to master the important skill sets needed to take a personal brand idea and turn it into a profitable, sustainable business. Today, she's sharing her best tips, tools, and advice for creating a life and a business that lights you up. 
We're talking about how to share the tough stories about your experiences, but really still staying true to yourself. We're talking about productivity and how to speak from a place of confidence and clarity and so much more. So whether you're just starting your business or you're a veteran at this, you're going to eat up this interview with my friend, Julie. So let's get right to it. Well, hey there, Julie. Welcome back to the show. It's been five years since you've been on the show. How? How does time go by that fast? That's crazy, especially with how much we talk and how much I I love you. I feel like every, every conversation we have is this like intimate Julie Amy podcast episode that we get to hear. Yes, we should be recording some of those, huh? No. Exactly. Okay. So it's been a while and I have to tell everyone, I probably mentioned this a little bit in the intro, but so I'm now in Nashville and Julie literally is one of my dear friends that we've gotten closer and closer since I've lived here. We go out to lunch and dinner a lot, which is so fun. And you also have the best recommendations. If I need a restaurant, if I need a facial, if I need anything, you know everyone. So you are a very special friend, but you also are the best recommender in the world. Thank you. I will take that. Yes. It comes from maybe your PR experience. Yeah, it is. It's the connection, the PR, like, yeah, I, I, especially when it comes to Nashville or Los Angeles, I can pretty much help anyone with anything. (laughs) Well, you absolutely do. So thank you for that. Okay. So I'm going in hot with my very first question. Are you ready for this? I am ready. Okay. I recently learned that you hid $30,000 a debt from your husband. And the reason I want to talk about this is because I know that this actually helped you to unlock something super important that was holding you back from really just coming into your own, both personally and professionally. So if can we just start out with that juicy story right from the get-go and what you learned from it? Yes. And I'm so glad it's actually, I kick off the book with this story and I want to preface this by saying, you know, you may have some listeners that know who I am and you probably have a lot of listeners that have never heard of me before. So a little uh, tidbit for you is that I tend to be a bit of a vault. Um, I am not someone who uses social media as a way to just like share all of my intimate, most like darkest secrets. Like I, you know, I use it, I use social media to grow my business. And I think that there are some strengths there, but I know that there are also some moments that people want to really know the real person behind the business, behind the Instagram, behind all of that. So I knew that if I was ever given the gift to write a book, that I felt that the pages would be a really beautiful and sacred place for me to open up in ways that I never had before. So I didn't hold back. And I start the book with this story of I get a call from my husband, John, Amy, who you know, and he, and he's an actor. So, and I say that because he, I answer the phone and he sounds completely normal. So it's like, he's definitely like in his actor (laughs) mode and he just goes, you know, Hey hon, when were you going to tell me about the credit card? And in that moment, And if anyone has ever been in a moment where like this shameful guilt ridden thing is now being found out, it's like, it's weird. It's like time freezes. Like I was sitting at the kitchen table, but like, I like wasn't in my house anymore. I didn't know where I was. And in that moment, I knew what he was talking about. I had over the last three years, secretly and quietly amassed over $30,000 of credit card debt. And I had kept it from him. And I was so delusional about the hole that I had gotten myself in that I would literally say things like, I'll book a new PR gig and I'll pay it off and he'll never find out. Or he'll book a new show and somehow I'll take the money from the show without him knowing and pay it off and he'll never find out. Or like, I'll win the lottery. I will win the lottery and pay this off and he will never find out. And the most insane part about it, Amy, was that I wasn't even buying lottery tickets. Like Mm. it was bad. My delusion, my denial, like my irrational thinking, it was insanity. And so in that moment, it was this floodgate opened up of my husband now knows this shameful, dark secret. I can no longer hide. But all I could think about in that moment was, why am I so afraid to be honest? 
Why am I so afraid to be honest about money? Why am I so afraid to be honest about my fear about money? Why am I so afraid to be honest about the fact that I don't really understand money or how to budget money or how to save money? Why am I so afraid to be honest that I don't even feel worthy of the money that's coming to me so I spend it quicker than I can make it? Why am I so afraid to be honest about these things? And for me, it really came from what I call in the book, your origin stories. Everyone has one. Your origin story is the the story that kind of made you who you are. And then those stories start to shape the reality of the world that we live in as adults. And my origin story was one of just a lot of scarcity. I came from a very small town. My mom and my dad did not have a lot of money when we were growing up. My dad was raised in extreme poverty. My grandparents had, you know, they were completely illiterate. They had second grade level educations. My grandmother never saw the ocean. She died without ever seeing the ocean with her own two eyes, like literally lived in a shack or trailer her entire life. And so I grew up kind of around this, this mindset that there was never enough. Money wasn't talked about because money, we didn't have money to talk about. And it was just like getting by. If we could just get by, you know, my dad, literally, he wore a blue collar to work every day, like very blue collar working family. And with that, there was a lot of struggles. You know, there was a lot of personal stuff going on and alcoholism and all of these other things that play into this scarcity mindset of not having enough, not being enough and not feeling safe in that. And so this compounded to a series of beliefs from my origin story that I had that in order to succeed, things had to be really hard. I'm a financial toddler. I don't, I'm not worthy of money. I don't know how to manage money. I'm not good with numbers. I was never good at math. Like all of these things that I would tell myself that literally brought me to this moment, being at the kitchen table, now having to figure out, okay, where do I go from here? Yeah. I mean, that's powerful. And in that moment, I know you talk about this more in the book, you, that specific moment kind of broke you open in some ways in terms of a new path, a new journey to who you are. Yeah. You know, it's, it was, I, you know, I say in the book, I was kind of like metaphorically, like, you know, skydiving down to this new rock bottom. And I remember thinking in that moment, how do I not waste this? Mm. That's a great question. Yeah. I'm given this situation, dare I call it a gift. I can call it a gift now, but how do I not waste this? And thankfully, my husband was able to pick himself up and be like, I don't know what the F is going on with you, but you need to go figure yourself out. I don't know if this is like some kind of Fenders anonymous addiction thing that you have going on, or if this is like some isolated event or like what it is, but I'm scared. Um, I'm going to take money out of our family savings that you're going to have to pay back. We went and talked to an attorney. We set up a new kind of a will and family trust. And in it, it said like, if anything were to happen to my husband, Julie had to pay back the money. Oh, geez. Before anything. I mean, he was like really dead serious on making sure our children were okay. And I don't blame him for that. And luckily he didn't leave me. Right. You know, he gave me this gift of like, you need to go figure your stuff out. And so I started in therapy. I started going, you know, to a a 12 step program called Al-Anon, which changed my life. I started reading all the books. I started going to all the conferences. I started all the Dave Ramsey podcasts. I started the Oprah's debt diet. Like I, I did it all, like trying to get a handle on this. I finally started working with financial advisors and people that could budget things in my business. And it, and it also, at the time I was just doing PR, I didn't have the business that I had now, but it really cracked open this new possibility for me to finally be a hundred percent responsible and accountable for the decisions and choices that I chose to make in my life. Yes. And you've come so far since that day because I see you do the work and I see how the work shows up in your life. And that's why I'm so inspired by what you do. And we have very many deep conversations about, I share my insecurities and you always have really great insight about how you work through some of this stuff. So you're a woman who does the work and I admire that more than, than you know, and it's evident in every single page of this book. So I'm really excited for people to get their hands on it. I wanted to talk to you about productivity because in my book, you are the queen of productivity. 
You're productive, and this is even better. You're productive without hustling all the time, which is rare in our industry. And hustle is something I've dealt with and struggled with for a long time. So I know this is something you've worked at and that you actually have some tools to use to make this possible. And I think it's really important because it addresses boundaries and people pleasing and releasing control. These are three things you talk about a lot in the book. So can we talk about some of those tools? Can you share some of those tools for more productivity and more freedom? Yes. So I kind of have like a bird's eye view that's a little bit more mindset and and deeper that I'll share. And then I have just like some really specific tips and hacks that people can start implementing today that at least helped me. So what allowed me to, you know, and, and growing up, and I talk about this in the book too, like I needed everyone to like me. I so desperately needed everyone to like me, to accept me, my worthiness and my value was 110% contingent on somebody else bestowing <laughs> their likeness onto me. And, you know, there, I have so many stories where I share this, but, you know, I would even, it was so sad, really, and pathetic that I would even go as far as to like somebody just because they liked me or to date somebody just because they liked me. Not even that I wanted to even date the person or that I wanted to be the person's friend. I would just by default like them because I would automatically like them back because they liked me. And so this cycle of people pleasing and really putting my worthiness and my self-love in the hands of other people created a really toxic cycle. It also created a, to- a toxic cycle of having no boundaries, no, no non-negotiables, a toxic cycle of wanting to control anything and everything because it made me feel powerful and it made me feel safe, you know, all of those things. So when the credit card debt happened, along with a slew of just other revelations, I found out, and I didn't coin these or come up with these. They're very well known in therapy groups and 12-step circles, but there's three steps or three tools, if you will, that gave me immense freedom. And it is awareness, acceptance, and action. And when I was able to discover what awareness and acceptance and action was, it, it just unlocked this peace and the serenity in my life and the self-esteem in my life that I never had before. And so awareness is just simply, I would describe it as the identification that some problem or dysfunction exists in your life that needs to change. And awareness is always the first step. If we're not aware of what's happening, then we're just going to stay in denial and, and delusional. The next step is once we become aware of the problem or the dysfunction, we can step into acceptance. And so acceptance is almost always that really uncomfortable place that we all want to avoid, (laughs) where we come to grips with the idea that this problem is a part of me. It is not all of me. It does not define me. But it's merely kind of one piece of the jigsaw puzzle. And since it no longer fits in the puzzle, it needs to be removed. And acceptance, I have found, is always the hardest step. You know, it's it's easier to be aware. And then the third step is action, which I'll get to in a minute. And it's easier to, to just have the awareness and want to jump right into the action. Yeah. Because the acceptance, having to accept that something no longer fits, especially if there's some kind of payoff in that. And a lot of times it's like, well, I get to remain the victim in my own life story. It's someone else's responsibility to to fix me. The problem is out there or the problem is then. When we, when we get into that place of acceptance, we, we have to start to realize that the problem isn't me, but the problem begins and ends with me. And that's a huge revelation for people to get to. The problem isn't me, but the problem begins and ends with me. Yes. Yeah, that's powerful. The third step is then action. And that, I know we talk a lot about action on this podcast. That is usually just the plan, the idea, the strategy, the method, the step-by-step that someone implements to recover and restore those things that have gotten lost from the dysfunction. So this is your self-esteem, your confidence, your ability to love yourself, your worthiness, balance in your life power instead of hopelessness, having hopefulness, you know, all of those positive, uplifting, really, I think 
centered places that we all, when we are in true alignment, where we need to be, to be. And so that is what the action can ensue. So the three steps to freedom essentially are that the awareness, the acceptance and the action. Ah, fantastic. I love when we get very specific like that. Yes. And I would love to give you the second piece to that because that's kind of like the bird's eye view. Someone can say, okay, Julie, conceptually, I get this. I get awareness, acceptance and action, but like, how can I actually apply it to my life? So a really easy thing to use is we'll talk business. Um, Before awareness, acceptance and action in my business, I... I was a hot mess. I was a doormat. I worked 24 seven. I would say yes to everything. I would fit into other people's schedules instead of them fitting into mine. I would um, cancel plans with friends and family. If some kind of business thing came up, it was just like the, the business owned me. It ruled me. I had no boundaries between myself and my desperate eagerness to want to achieve. And so once I was able to implement awareness, acceptance, and action, one of the things that I did in my business that created these really beautiful boundaries and non-negotiables were my work hours. So I don't work at all on Fridays. I know that you now do that and it is life-changing. Years ago, I made that decision. I also have two small children. I have a toddler and an an eight-year-old. At the time, I think my son was probably about three. And so I wanted to be with him. I wanted to spend time with him. And so he gave me a really good excuse to create these boundaries. But I said, okay, I'm not working anymore on Fridays. Um, I'm not taking any calls on Mondays. Mondays are the day for me to do what I need to do, my work. And on Monday through Thursday, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, I will take calls, meetings. I will record my podcast. I will coach all of that stuff. But I ha- I only do it between the hours of 10 and 3. And if it does not fit between the hours of 10 of- and 10 and 3, then clearly it's not that important and I'll get to it the next day or I'll get to it in the next week or I'll get to it in the next month. And I have had that 10 to 3 work hour implemented really for the probably about the last four years. Wow. And it has been a game changer to my business. Now, I'll be completely honest, right now I'm launching a book. So I have opened up my schedule a little bit more right. to fit in certain things. But I also know in those moments to go easy on myself because it's just a season. Yes. And I'll get right back into those kind of more of those stringent boundaries once I'm done with my launch. And so um, I don't know if that helps anyone, but if anyone out there is like me that you have a really hard time saying no, (laughs) you know, kind of having to parent yourself and like give yourself those kinds of hours of like, okay, you you have to be home by 3.30. (laughs) And if you're not home by 3.30, you're going to get grounded. You know, that kind of stuff really helps me. So that's just one way to use awareness, acceptance and action into a tangible thing. I became aware of how dysfunctional my work week was. I accepted that it began and ended with me, my schedule and how I planned it out. And then I took action to take the hours and the time back in my life. That's powerful. Absolutely. And I love that you talk about boundaries so much throughout the book because so many of us need to reevaluate our boundaries or lack thereof. But in the book, you also talk a lot about confidence and clarity. And you have a beautiful message for women to think about when they're communicating to make sure they're speaking from a place of confidence and clarity. I I think it's a question, right? Can we talk about that? Yeah. So what I discovered through not having confidence and then working towards showing up in my life in a confident way was that I would always wait. And I don't know if you've ever been this way, Amy, but it's like I would always wait for my externals to change before I was confident enough to X, Y, Z. Yes. Once I get the job or once I, I have that, you know, multi six figure launch or once I get the guy or once like, then my life will change. Then everything will be happy. Once I do this, then we can get that. And it wasn't until I decided to start what I call acting as if that I was able to come from a place, I was able to change my behavior and I was able to come up from a place of, no, I have to start being the person today that I want to be tomorrow in order to get the results that I need today. So it's different than fake it till you make it. 
I think act as if you really start to embody not trying to be someone you're not or even copy someone else, but it's about finding the behaviors or the patterns potentially in somebody else that you aspire to have in your own life and start kind of copying the way they think. Like if I want to be a seven-figure entrepreneur, how does a seven-figure entrepreneur think? How do they spend their day? How do they spend their time? Who do they partner with? You know, what is really essential in their lives? And if I don't have the answers to it, I'm going to start acting as if I do. I'm going to start making some things up, testing it out, seeing how it fits. But for me, it's really about getting into that mindset of, I have to start becoming the person that I want to be tomorrow, today, and really start embodying her instead of waiting for her to show up for me. Um, Because that's where I think the clarity comes from. Clarity creates confidence, not the other way around. Yes. And so I think a lot of times people wait for the confidence before they can get the clarity, but it's actually in the action and in the being and in the doing that you find the clarity that then gives you the confidence that you need to move forward. Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't know about you, but I often find myself reflecting back and thinking about where my business was just a year ago. And to be honest, growth hasn't looked exactly like I thought it would. Like last year was a really tough year for me mentally, but I came out of that more clear and ready to take on the world. So that minor setback was actually what I needed. The point is growth happens, even if it's not how you expect it. HubSpot is ready to grow with you and your business, however that looks for you, with the totally customizable customer relationship management platform, a CRM, HubSpot connects your business to your customers with easy to use apps, hubs, and tools designed to help your business grow and scale like never before. Learn how your business can grow better at HubSpot.com. You know, something you said earlier that I wanted to come back to is you talked about how on social media, you use social media to grow your business, but you're not incredibly forthcoming with things that happen in your life and your history. And you and I had drinks a while back and you told me one of the stories that's in the book. And I'm like, you're going to talk about that? You're like, absolutely. And I mean, from alcohol to drugs to people pleasing and boundaries and debt and everything in between, you really go there. And I that kind of freaked me out at first because I, obvi- I also don't share tons of private stuff on social media. So I guess my question is, why did you write a book that was so personal that you really went there? If you're not doing it on social media, why did you find a need to do it in a book? Yeah, you know, for me, I love books. I have always loved books. I've always loved getting lost in the pages. I love stories. And I love personal development books. I'm more of a nonfiction reader than I am a fiction reader, but I still love story. And I remember there was one time that one of my, you know, this this entrepreneur that I admired had a book coming out. And she was kind of what I made up and told myself about her was that she was kind of like me, like she was kind of a vault. She didn't really share a lot on social media. She used it more for business. And when I heard that she had this book coming out, I was so excited because as a, as someone that looked up to her, as someone that admired her, as someone that really respected everything that she had built, I was like, Oh my gosh, I'm finally going to get to know the real her. Like, I can't wait to hear about you know, maybe she has a story about debt, or maybe, you know, she had a a, a wild side to her, you know, young adult life, or maybe she's been divorced, or, you know, maybe there's something in her that I don't know, that would kind of mirror back to me a piece of myself. And if I could just see a piece of her, if I could see a piece of myself in her, then maybe I wouldn't feel so alone. And maybe I would feel even more connected to her than I do now. And so, you know, I, I pre-ordered my copy, you know, I was so excited. The book came and at this point, Amy, I had been following this, this leader for so long. I knew her content pretty well. You know, I, I watched her content and and knew her programs and all of that. And I want to say I got about a third of the way in the book and I started to paraphrase what was coming next because it was literally just a regurgitation of her, you know, her programs, her webinars, her free classes, her, you know, like whatever it was, it was just a regurgitation of so much of what I already knew. And I remember I closed the book, I put it on my bookshelf, 
And still to this day, I've never opened it again. And I was just so underwhelmed. And not that she did anything wrong. It's just that I wanted so much more. I wanted her. You know, I don't know how else to explain it other than I wanted her because I wanted to be able to see myself in her and have that reflected. And it, it wasn't showing up the way in which I wanted it to in those pages. And so I told myself at that moment, I said, you know, if I ever get the chance to write a book and actually have people read the dang thing, no less, like I'm going to finally give them the one thing that I always want when I read books. And that is that authenticity that is pulling back that veil that is really showing me, you know, the good, the bad, the ugly, the stinky, all of that stuff so that maybe they can see a piece of themselves in me and not feel so alone. And so that's why I really chose to go there. And, you know, and I kind of mentioned it earlier, and I'll be the first to admit, this is a judgment, what I'm about to say is a judgment. But I believe that there is a difference between being vulnerable and like bleeding all over someone. Mm, Agreed. And I feel like that there are lots of people on social media that show up in a really beautiful, vulnerable way. And then there's lots of people who are just bleeding on us all day long. And it kind of becomes a little bit of like, it's like a car crash that you can't like look away from. Um, to me, my judgment is that it's it's like a trauma response. It's a very unhealthy way of trying to connect with people. It's like they're um, they're sharing from this open wound and not from a scar. And so for me, I I knew that if I was ever going to share from a scar, I wanted it to to be in a place that would really live on in, in a container that I always loved, that I thought was beautiful, and that was a book. Not to say that things don't live on on social media. But it's mass consumption. It's here today. It's gone tomorrow. Whereas a book is steadfast. The pages don't change. You know, it's written in ink and it's not going anywhere. So that's why I decided to do it in the book and to share what I shared in those pages. Well, you did a beautiful job, my friend. The book is called Get What You Want, How to Go from Unseen to Unstoppable. And you are the perfect person to write this book. This this idea to go from unseen. You know what's interesting about this book? I feel like your years of PR experience, something that we talked about the last time you were on the show, and then your years of experience of growing a business and going through all the troubles and tribulations of being an entrepreneur and what that looked like, and then experiences of your personal life as well. It's You're the perfect person to write a book to share with us how we actually are seen and we are unstoppable because you have been. You're walking the talk and I love that about you. So congratulations for a beautiful book. Thank you so much. And I, I love that you mentioned the unseen piece. There's a, there's a quote in the book that I love that resonates. It resonated so deeply with me and it's, you can't hide yourself and expect to be seen. And I think in this world, especially with how much we use social media, it is so easy to hide behind a screen, to hide behind a perfectly curated Instagram post, yes. to hide behind you know, the veil of whatever it is. But then we have these expectations of, well, why am I not growing? Why isn't my business more successful? Why don't I have more followers? Why am I not creating more impact? Why don't I have you know, that superpower within me that is influenced like you know, cracking open? And if we're really being honest with ourselves, a lot of times it's because we're hiding, but expecting that we should be seen by the world. And so it's my hope that within these pages, if there's anyone out there that can relate to that, that we we won't no longer hide and expect to be seen. We will actually start showing up and allowing ourselves to be seen in a, in a really powerful and authentic way. Absolutely. So beautiful. So I have a rapid fire question session coming up for you, and it's my most favorite part of the episode. But before we get there... Tell everybody where they go to buy the book. Are there bonuses involved? Like what's going on with this? Yes. So you can get the book wherever books are sold. However, if you go to juliesolomon.net slash get what you want, you can order from wherever you want on that page. But if you order on that page and send us just a screenshot of your receipt, then we will give you access to a live virtual get what you want workshop that I'm going to be doing later this summer. It's going to be jam-packed 
with a lot of the lessons that I teach in the book, at the end of every chapter of the book, I have a little bit of homework for for people. It's a study guide of sorts called Your Turn. And so we're going to be diving deeper into that, that study guide during the workshop and just having a really incredible and transformative day together. So if you order from juliesolomon.net slash get what you want, you will get a free ticket to that virtual event. And then of course, if you're like my husband, who is extremely dyslexic and you don't read, you can listen to the book on Audible. I just recorded the audio book. It was so much fun. And um, I highly recommend getting the Audible as well. Oh, I will be doing both. I like to be able to highlight the book, but then listen to it when I'm on the treadmill. So you will be in my ear, friend. I'm just so excited for your first book. It's just a beautiful piece of work that you've put together. I know behind the scenes how hard you worked on this and how much heart you put into each page. So I can't wait for people to get their hands on it. So go check it out. I'll put all the links in the show notes. But before I let Julie go, are you ready for our rapid fire question session? I am ready. Okay. So first question is, who is someone that's inspiring you at the moment and why? Someone that is inspiring me at the moment is Abraham Hicks. Okay. Slash Esther Hicks. And why is because I love the idea of being in the receiving mode, as Abraham Hicks calls it, to kind of get out of your own way and let the world surprise and delight you. Ooh, and yes. as a control freak, recovering control freak slash con- control freak still at times, I need that. I need to be reminded that I don't know it all. I don't have all the answers. I don't know what's best. And if I can just get my brain out of the way and just be open to what is possible, miracles can happen. Absolutely. I learned from um, Abraham Hicks about, uh, wouldn't it be great if, mm-hmm. have you ever heard yes. him talk about that? Yeah. yeah. Wouldn't it be great if da da da? And I say it all day long about things that I want for me or for Hobie, and it just feels good and I think it manifests. So, yeah, such great lessons there. Okay. So, speaking of great lessons, let's talk about lessons, advice. What's like some of the best advice you've ever received? And I'm sure you've received a lot of great advice, but can you think of something that really stands out? The best advice I ever received well, one is don't spend money you don't have. <laughs> that was a shocker to me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, really? Okay. What a concept. Oh, you know? yeah. What a concept. And, um, you know, I think the other piece of advice that I have gotten um, that I love is that the definition of success is ease. And that has taken me a really long time to believe. Amen. The definition of success is ease. I love that. Okay. So here's another question What does confidence mean to you? Mm. I think confidence means being able to articulate clearly your heart and your soul to another. Ooh, that is beautiful. Yes and yes. Okay, two more questions. Since you're the Nashville queen and you've shared so many amazing places with me, right now, what's one of your favorite go-to spots in Nashville for a great meal? Okay, well, I love Henrietta Red. I do too. So good. The oysters. Yes, love. those are amazing. And then the, the Soho House Nashville just opened and I feel like I practically live there. So okay. that, that's a good one too. Cannot wait to go there with you. And then final question, what are you most looking forward to this year? Mm, I'm most looking forward to my book coming out and getting out in the world because I'm tired of taking you, Amy, to Rose Pony to talk about it all day. <laughs> um, <laughs> Rose Pony is our spot. Yes, I'm excited about people reading this book. And then I'm really excited to take a break once the book comes out. I have never done. I am going to try to take, dare I say, pretty much the entire month of July off. Amen. As you should. That is fantastic. I love it. (laughs) Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to be your accountability partner to make sure you do it. Cause you know, I'm taking the whole month of June off. So if you see me working, please call me out and I'll call you out in July lovingly just to make sure we do it. Friend, congratulations on a beautiful book. I will be singing your praises all about it, telling everyone to get it. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So there you have it. I love Julie's approaches to business and being really intentional about how you approach everything because it all ties together. 
Now, if you want a little more where this came from, go treat yourself to her book. It is absolutely phenomenal. And one thing that I think you're going to take away from the book is that she's so real and raw about her stories. I mean, I've known Julie for a long time, and I didn't know some of these stories that were in the book. And one, they made me respect her more for like telling the truth, even when she wasn't in the perfect light. And number two, her book made me feel less alone because I resonated with so much of what she's gone through to get to where she is today. So I feel like you're going to feel the same. So go check it out for sure. And if you know a friend who's just getting into the entrepreneurial journey, or maybe they're struggling with their journey, please share this episode with them. I think they're going to get a lot of value from it. Grab the link to it, text it to a friend. It could really go a long way. All right, my friend, thank you so very much for tuning in. I'll see you next week, same time, same